ألم نجعل الأرض مهادا والجبال أوتادا وخلقناكم أزواجا وجعلنا نومكم سباتا وجعلنا الليل لباسا وجعلنا النهار معاشا وبنينا فوقكم سبعا شدادا وجعلنا سراجا وهاجا وأنزلنا من المعصرات ماء ثجاجا لنخرج به حبا ونباتا وجنات ألفافا ألم نجعل الأرض مهادا والجبال أوتادا وخلقناكم أزواجا وجعلنا نومكم سباتا وجعلنا الليل لباسا وجعلنا النهار معاشا وبنينا فوقكم سبعا شدادا وجعلنا سراجا وهاجا وأن وأنزلنا من المعصرات ماء ثجاجا لنخرج به حبا ونباتا وجنات ألفافا So now, you know, one of the remarkable features of the Qur'an in many, many, many cases is that the rhyme scheme actually tells you where a paragraph ends or begins. Now notice, عَمَّا يَتَسَاءَلُونَ عَنِ النَّبَئِ الْعَظِيبِ الَّذِي هُمْ فِيهِ مُخْتَلِفُونَ كَلَّا سَيَعْلَمُونَ ثُمَّ كَلَّا سَيَعْلَمُونَ Now look at the next few ayat. Just listen to them. أَلَمْ نَجْعَلِ الْأَرْضَ مِهَادًا وَالْجِبَالَ أَوْتَادًا وَخَلَقْنَاكُمْ أَزْوَاجًا now, again, because we're trying to study and appreciate the surah and how it's a cohesive whole and a cohesive argument, we need to understand this iltifat, this transition to another subject, which seems almost unrelated. For example, Alam Najal al Arba Mihada, easy translation, did we not turn the ed the, the earth, did we not make the earth into a plane, a smooth plane for you? Mihad actually comes another word related with mihad is al Mahd. Al Mahd is the cradle. Okay? Or the cradle in which the, the child is comfortable. Allah says, didn't we make the earth a place where you may be comfortable? Also, mihad is used in classical Arabic for a bed. So it's a place where you rest. 
Now, human beings are very aware of what things they, are, they themselves are capable of. Right? We're capable of making a bed for ourselves. We're capable of maybe building a house for ourselves, etc., etc. Now you will find a discussion of how Allah's capability in your own visual experience, how it surpasses your own. Look at what you're able to make for yourself and compare that to the entire creation of the earth. أَلَمْ نَجْعَلِ الْأَرْضَ مِهَادًا Or we're able to pitch tents. Literally we pitch tents. In the old times you pitch tents. Allah says, وَالْجِبَالَ أَوْتَادَ Allah says, didn't we make the mountains or install the mountains as pegs? So a tent is known by the most important element of the tent, which is what? The peg. And this is a feature of Arabic. You call something by its most essential component. Allah says, you're able to pitch these tents. Let me show you the kinds of tents I pitch. What, and what are the kinds of tents? Well, tada. What comparison do you have in your, your imagination to what Allah Azza wa is capable of? وَخَلَقْنَاكُمْ azwaja. You didn't create a pair, you didn't create woman, man didn't create woman, woman didn't create man. We created you like this. This is not your own manufacturing. This is being given to you. You're not even capable over your own creation. Your own gender you're not capable over. Your own spouse you're not capable over, the spouses that you've been created in. So you've been created in two different genders. And this is again, the creative power of Allah as manifest even on the rebel himself, the kafir himself who's listening to this. He knows even that I've been created in pairs and I'm not the one who was in charge of this. I didn't design this myself. Then Allah Azza wa goes forward and goes eat to the person himself. He says, وَجَعَلْنَا نَوْمَكُمْ subata," And we made your, your sleep. Naum is sleep, deep sleep. You know how Allah says in Ayatul Kursi, لَا تَأْخُذُهُ سِنَةٌ وَلَا نَوْمٌ Sina is slumber, like sleepiness, drowsiness, and Naum is deep sleep. Right? So Allah says, He made your deep sleep subata. Literally, this subat means that which is, that cuts off. It cuts off. So Allah speaks of night as something that cuts you off. What does it cut you off from? First of all, it cuts your body off from what? Your soul. Your soul departs from your body. Then it cuts you off from your daily affairs, your work, your business, your, your, your concerns. You're cut off from everything in life as soon as you hit deep sleep. It's like you're dead to the world. You can't go, no matter how long you try to avoid your sleep, in the end you will be overpowered by it. And this is the power Allah has on even the one who disbelieves. وَجَعَلْنَا اللَّيْلَ لِبَاسًا And we and we made the night a means of garment. Why is the night called a garment? Because it, the idea is it covers you up. It takes over you like a blanket. And the garment is something you hide underneath. And you know people hide in the night. Crimes take place in the night. Secrets are associated with the night. Ambush is associated with the night. Robbery is associated with the night. Right? These are the things that are associated with night because it's secrecy. But the other thing here that's, that's illustrated is this is a libas, this is a cloth that is put on you that you don't have the power to take off. So Allah Azza wa Jal made the night manifest over you. Another means by which the creation of Allah overpowers all of the creations on the earth. The night. وَجَعَلْنَا اللَّيْلَ لِبَاسًا وَجَعَلْنَا النَّهَارَ مَعَاشًا And we made the bright day, the morning time, or the daytime, a means of livelihood and a time of livelihood. These are the two implications of ma'ash. That the, the, the daytime is a means by which people uh, earn their, their income. And this is particularly true in the desert because in the, there are very few patches of desert where there's actually farmland. And those are the critical aspects of desert life because that's where the you know, food from, for the entire region is coming. And that food will not grow until it gets what? Sunlight. So the daytime is a means by which life is delivered. And then also this is the time in which business takes place and most work takes place. It's in the daytime. Even today in the most modern of times, the stock market opens up in the morning. So this is the time for which it, uh, it is stalled for earning one's income and getting ma'ash, a means of livelihood. Then Allah speaks finally, وَبَنَيْنَا فَوْقَكُمْ سَبْعًا shidada. So now again, here, وَبَنَيْنَا Allah didn't just say, وَبَنَيْنَا سَبْعًا shidada. We constructed seven intense skies, or seven intense, powerful, flawless heavens. Rather, He added, فَوْقَكُمْ We constructed above you. We constructed above you these seven heavens. Now compare whatever you've been able to construct as human beings to what Allah has constructed. Sab'an shidada, subhanallah. And then on top of this, وَجَعَلْنَا سِرَاجًا وَحَاجًا And then we installed siraj. Siraj in Arabic refers to anything that emits light or anything that is lit. But in the Qur'an, consistently it is used to refer to the sun. And then add to it wahaj, the, the form that's used in Arabic is that which hyperbolizes. So an incredibly brilliant blazing lamp we installed for you. 
وَأَنزَلْنَا مِنَ الْمُعْصِرَاتِ مَا أَنْ ثَجَّاجَ This is a very beautiful ayah of the creative power of Allah. He says, and we sent down مِنَ الْمُعْصِرَاتِ To squeeze. The winds come and they literally squeeze the clouds and then the clouds get, drip what? Rain. مَا أَنْ ثَجَّاجَ Water that is thajjaj. Thaj, literally, it means overflowed or heavy profuse kind of rain or flooding. So we sent this intense kind of water supply. When Allah doesn't send it, it can create death and famine. And when Allah sends too much of it, it can create death and famine. Or death and destruction. Right? Flooding. And now you will find a, t- a, a change in tone of mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And how, how many favors He has given to you. So we may derive or ex- you know, extract by means of it. Habban wa nabata. Habban is used for all kinds of grain, all kinds of wheat, all kinds of crop. And nabat is used for all kinds of grass or vegetation. So anyway, لِيُخْرِجَ بِهِ حَبًّا وَنَبَاتًا وَجَنَّاتٍ أَلْفَافًا And above and beyond that, Jannat specifically, lush gardens. Alfaf is the plural, it could be argued of Lafif, though there are other opinions also. Lafif means that which is wrapped around. So the idea is gardens in which the trees and the branches and, the, and you know, these, these plants, they are intertwined among each other. Plants so close together and so lush that you can't tell where one ends and the other begins. Right, that's Jannat al Alfafa. That's the imagery that's been presented. Now, after all of this explanation of creative power, this was the second paragraph, by the way, the second lesson of the surah, to compare human ability or human inability to the creative power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The, go back to the first paragraph, what was the whole problem? The whole problem was a denial of the hereafter. So now it's coming back to that problem. Now that you've been put in your place, now we can talk about that which you were asking about and being sarcastic about.